afternoon, Slas. It's nice to be back here. Welcome to the meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, sorry, Voters Anonymous. Um, interesting observation in uh, this last, every discussion we have had, whether we start to talk about biotech or a different uh, aspects of gaming or whatnot, after you have had one beer or two beers, the discussion has always gone to the elections. Whether it's elections which recently happened in the United States, whether it's the upcoming elections in Estonia, whether it's uh, whether Moldovan election in uh, in the past few years ago was honest, but it always goes to the discussion of elections. So, for better or worse, for the next uh, 16 minutes and 20 seconds, we are going to talk about elections. First of all, disclosure. I don't have interest in the politics as such. I'm doing security of elections in a half dozen countries. I don't get to vote in these countries. I don't really care who wins. Uh, my interest is only about the security, the transparency, and the integrity and verifiability, so that we know that the right person, the person who was supposed to win, won. The topic which was in on the ballot is rightfully representing the, the wish and the intent of the voters. That's the only thing I, I have, I'm really am interested about. Well, first of all. We all remember this iconic picture of Judge, I don't remember his name, when he's looking whether the shad is hanging or not. And always when we talk about election security and electronic voting, the question is, is this the reason we are talking about it? And in short, no. The reason we are talking about election, uh, electronic voting is not originally about convenience. It's not about being modern. It's not about uh, a, a uh, quick counting of the votes, it's a, or even accuracy. The original reason is people didn't want to be beaten up. Secret ballot, also calls it, called an Australian ballot, is relatively new. It is only 150 years old. It actually started to be implemented in the major Western civilization countries only, give or take, 120 years ago. Before that, there was no secret ballot. And there was a lot of small communities, and for whatever reason, if you voted wrong, you got beaten up, your store window was broken, whatnot. So because they didn't know about secret ballot as a concept, the result was, let's use technology to stop people, people to be beaten up. And the theory behind it is, let's remove the evidence how people voted. So in order to have the secrecy and uh, privacy of the ballot and secret vote, the idea was, let's remove the paper. And that was how lever machine was, uh, was born. So the lever machine idea is this, the whole thing where you have seen the movie, you go to booth, you press the buttons, you pull the lever, it's a huge mechanical calculator, and the vote is recorded, but no evidence how you vote it is. Obviously, unauditable, but they didn't think about audit being that important, because the real thing they wanted to do stopped being beaten up. Well, as always, humans are extremely good in crime. So in the communities where lever machine started, a very famous shoe police attack happened. Shoe police attack means that you did, when you went to booth, you couldn't have a, a hand sneaker, you couldn't have gloves. And when you went to booth, you all of a sudden found out that all the buttons of undesirable candidates had black shoe polish. And when you came back, you had to show your fingers. And if your fingers were not clean, there was an incident, immediate response. So this is how originally direct recording, which is the grandfather of electronic voting, kiosk voting, that's how it was born, what was the reason it was born, and actually we are in a natural evolution and progression from lever machine to going, of, going forward. The lever machine actually followed the theory. You press the button, you pull the lever, it adds one vote to the candidate. And I think most of the people on the planet Earth who are familiar with the democracy, they think and agree this is exactly how it should be. That's a very simple theory. You cast a vote, the vote is added to the candidate of your choice, on you go. Unfortunately, modern elections are looking a little bit more like this. These are actually the block charts of two voting machines used today in elections in the United States and internationally. So today, when our democracy has made, become more complex, it's not anymore simply adding one to one. As we have a lot of different flavors of democracy around the world. Here in Finland, you just have a one number on the, on the ballot, and that's it. In the US, 
you have a piece of paper where you have 30 questions and you choose sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three. When you go to Germany, you have a book. There's 400 candidates and you, you vote 10 or 12 of those. And we have a lot of co concepts called fractional voting or, or balanced voting. So right now in a city of San Francisco, if I don't, uh, my memory calls me right, you actually can say, I vote for this guy, and if he doesn't get one, I then the, the secondary vote goes to another person, which enables you to vote for a minor party candidate. And if your, your vote is not, if that candidate is not passing, at least your votes then count for the second candidate. So the democratic process has become way more complex than it used to be. And this is why people have a very fair and common sense way of thinking, I just cast a vote and, and that should be added to that candidate, how, how difficult it can be. Unfortunately, the laws have changed and it's much more complex than that. Also, we have to understand what voting is. First of all, you get a bunch of people and they vote. And they are not trustworthy. And yet, you have to pre uh, have a system which everybody understands. It's a natural level uh, security. Remember, the governments can be changed only by bullets or ballots. We have chosen in democracy, it's better not kill people, so let's use ballots and agree that we choose our leaders instead of having a coup. But we really are talking about very serious topics. It's either bullets or ballots. So it has to be a tamper proof. It has to be protecting the privacy of the voters so that the voters can be intimidated or coerced. It has to be resilient against the foreign governments or domestic criminals or any combination of those to influence. Also, we have to remember we cannot trust the voters. Every voter has an opinion. Voters want their candidate to win. It's very natural, very fair. That's what it's for. It's an emotional process. So everybody who gets to the vote are inherently having their own angle. Elections are conducted by volunteers. So now you, you bring in the same people who you shouldn't trust as the insiders of the process. And again, we have a cyber wars. Back in uh, 20 years ago, we didn't think about cyber wars. We didn't think about, at the time we think that the local mob will influence the vote. They will stuff the ballot box. Now we have foreign actors. We have a lot of different ways and, and interest to influence. And we have to remember, it's equally damaging for democracy that if people lose the trust, if people think, oh, my vote doesn't count, why should I vote because it's going to be hacked or modified? No. First of all, you should always vote because more votes are cast, harder it is to anybody to go and manipulate, so always vote. But also, you know, these kind of things, we have had a fraud in banking system, we have a fraud in, in elections. For a long time, we always have found a way to mitigate. So it's very important that participation in the process, get up, go to vote, be part of the system as it was meant to be. So, uh, also the one thing is a claims. So the system has to be able to defend itself. If somebody makes a game, uh, a, play, a, a, a allegation saying the votes, uh, the election will be rigged, there has to be a way to prove that it was not rigged. Because it might, be, it might have not been rigged. It's, uh, I mean, very possible and most of the times when allegations are made that something has been happening, nothing happened. But the damaging thing is to make the false claims. And remember that in elections, inherently in elections, we don't trust each other. That's why secret ballot was invented in Tasmania and Australia. That was a penal, penal com, uh, colony. Everybody there was a prisoner. For whatever reason, they realized we shouldn't exactly think that the next guy is honest. And that's also how the whole world works. We always have to be inherently distrusting each other. In elections, we replace trust with transparency. Trust by verify. So in here, the verification is more important. It's the transparency. If you take the transparency away, you have nothing. That's why it's all about audit, audit, audit. Audit, in, uh, in my opinion, in elections, should be always conducted. Even when it's very clear and it's uh, actually exactly how it was predicted, we thought this guy will win if we, by 80%, he won by 80%, still audit. Because the only way you can trust the system is by auditing it in every step of the way. Now when we go to talk about electronic voting, there's a lot of false analogies. And false analogies are usually the banking. We say, well, 
Why can't we vote in online and electronically? Because we can do banking. Well, first of all, we all know that there's a fraud all the time in the banking system. But the whole thing in, in banking is we can always correct errors. Any time when a, 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 your credit card is misused or there's fraud, you can always go, insurance company is covering it for bank, bank is correcting the whole thing. Also, there's no anonymity. You know, we were the voters anonymous. Uh, there's no anonymity in the banking system. You know and you can prove how you, how, who you paid. Your receiver knows who paid to you and both sides, banks know how it happened. And then IRS gets the information or your local tax authority from the bank. So there's absolutely no secrecy. And remember, if I can prove how I voted, I can get beaten up. I can be coerced if I do the wrong thing. So that's why I shouldn't be able to prove how I voted because I, then I would be demanded. I can be coerced and demanded to prove how I voted. So analysis of the system we use today. First of all, this, this map shows what are the systems used in the United States. The thing which is uh, the gray color is paper voting. They actually vote with a paper ballot. The good thing about paper ballot is verifiable. You can actually go to the permanent media called paper. You can take the piece of paper and you can see how the voter voted. That's absolute proof. When you go to other colors, it's less and less auditable. So when you have electronic voting, there's no permanent record how person voted. It allows a lot of different methods to manipulate, and you don't have a way to go back to the safety to see what actually happened. And this is kind of telling the picture. These are uh, three real election machines. Uh, we have a little bit modified the software. It says vote, uh, unlimited votes. It's Everest software. So actually, all the machines used in the polling places we have proven they're hackable. So they are useful, you ha they are more trustworthy still when you work right than pe uh, a human count, because humans are error prone. But humans are the only person in a uh, human count which can verify that the result is right. So humans always should be part of the process. There always should be a human record, a uh, voter intent record, which is the paper, so that you can go back in a, in a time of the doubt or in a normal audit, so you can always go back to the paper. Also in the United States specifically, because I, the title was about the Estonia and U.S., because those are the two things. There's an upcoming well, uh, election in Estonia, there's a U.S. election which is passed. This is the U.S. So help, um, after the hanging shots of two, uh, 2002, a, a Help America Vote Act was created, which created billions of dollars of funding for jurisdictions to buy new equipment. Well, the new equipment was already in the market, so it was old designs. And that was the time when the massively these equipment are, are, were bought. Those machines were designed in the 80s. They are getting old and tired right now, so there's a lot of non-malicious stuff, malfunctions, etc. They also were designed in an area where current cyber wars were science fiction. The current attack mechanisms were, were science fiction. And a lot of the parts and consumables are already obsolete and very hard to get. There's two notable internet voting studies, uh, Washington DC and, and uh, Estonia. So in, in Washington DC, they created a election system on their own. Same as Estonia, they made their own, it's not a commercial system. Uh, they opened it up for mock election and uh, it got hacked. And what happened after that was, uh, a, a pre, after a brief study, Washington DC decided that uh, the, uh, they canceled the internet voting in the election. In Estonia, we made the study and we in order, because in, 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 uh, in Washington DC, we actually get a, a doing the testing with a real machine to be used, a real system to be used in elections. In Estonia, we took the uh, uh, Estonian government published source code and we built a copy of the Estonian government systems in order for us to use the, the, their distributed client and test that everything we do is real. And our findings, because there's a lot of have been discussed from Estonia, our findings are in Estonia e-voting, and you actually have here virtual machines. So you can be Estonia too. All the systems are here, and here is the sample malware, how you, how you hack the election, how you rig the election. So you can try yourself. Uh, never believe anyone, especially the talking hand on the stage. So any, t any time when you are, you are in doubt, trust but verify. And this is why in all the studies you should always provide a means for everybody who is interested to verify your findings. Well, this is not about implementation. Actually, the bigger problem here is that you cannot do it. No matter how good you are, no matter how much time you spend, we don't have technology to do online voting today. And the reason is very simple. We don't have a suitable math. 
So anyone who claims that they have solved the problem of online voting, the question is, where, where is your digital cash? Because a lot of these problems are the same as digital cash. What cash does is that when I go to the random uh, place and I buy stuff, I don't need to tell who I am. The receiver doesn't need to know who I am. They look, oh, that looks like a 20 euro. I take it. Transaction is complete. So it's a double plight. The cash has the capability of being double anonymous. It's very much the same requirement that voting has. So if everybody, anybody claims that they have solved a secure online voting, they probably then are billionaires already because they have also created a digital cash, and there's a lot more interest and money on the digital cash area. Uh, currently, we think that the uh, most uh, promising way of solving both digital cash and voting is a technology called homomorphic encryption. Well, there's a few things in that. First of all, one of the leading experts in that area, he himself, he's in his uh, 40s, he says he believes it's going to be solved, but not in his lifetime. So we are very far away from the time where, where it's po uh, possible. The other problem here is that a lot of countries' constitutions make a demand, a common man has to understand how the election is conducted. The common man, without any special education, has to be able to verify the results, because you're using common man as volunteers. So until we live in a Star Trek universe, where a eight years casually talk about quantum physics and warp engines, we are not going to have the conversation between common man about homomorphic encryption. I'm out of time. Thank you for listening to me, and thank you for having me.